Today's daf Yomi is Kedushin daf, known Zion Kedushin 57. We're going to start on Nun Zion and Manalif around eight lines from the top with respect to the laws of an Egla Rufa. So we're being taught that if a person tries to betroth a woman with uh, these items that our daf is going to talk about, it's not going to be a valid betrothal because you can't get benefit from it. So the Mishnah said that if you try to betroth a woman with an egg rufa, which is a which is a calf that you take into the wadi and kill, that that's not going to be a valid. Uh, you take the you take the calf into the wadi and kill it because you do not you found a dead body unattended to. So in, in those cases, we're not, you're not allowed to betroth the woman with that calf because you can't have any benefit from it. So the Gemara explains, what's our source for this idea of the egg la rufa? We know in Amri Debei Rebiyanai Kaparak Siva Kikachin because it says by the egg la rufa, it uses the word kapara because it says the word atonement, kapara amcha Yisrael. And just like by Kachim, it says, by sacred item, it says the word kapara. So we see that just like Kachim, you can't have benefit from it. Also, you can't have benefit from the Egla Rufa. We learn from the Egla Rufa, the value of a human life, is even a single human life, that all the elders of the town have to go and, and say our hands and not spill this blood. Even one life we value in its highest, this unattended body. Nobody even knows. All the elders have to stop what they're doing and attend to it. Then we say the next thing is the Tsipori Mitsura, the birds of the Mitsura. That if you try to betroth a woman with these birds, it's not a valid betrothal. We know that as part of the ritual of purification of the leper, we take one bird and slaughter it into a utensil with water. And then you take the other bird and dip it into that blood. So, how do we know that you cannot betroth a woman with the birds of the Mitsura? The Tana the Beir Bishmol. It says the word machshir. Now, machshir is some, it says this by the Asha Mitsura, by the guilt offering that the Mitsura brings, and it's going to allow the Mitsura, the Mitsura, somebody who's called Machusar Kippurim, it's going to allow him to eat from the sacred food. As long as he doesn't bring his Asha, he can't eat from the Kachim. So it has a word of it, it, it says, by Machshir or Machaper, we say we say the Allah by Asher Mitzvah and by Machaper and by all other Karbanos, Karbanos that you come to atone. The name of Machshir Machaper Mibachutz, and we also have the law of the Tzipora, the Tziporim of the Mitzvah that they're coming to be Machshir the Mitzvah outside, and also to bring a Karbanos outside the temple. So ma marshim chaper are more bifnim asibo marshir kim chaper. Just like with respect to the asher mitzora, which is a marshir, and all the also the other korbanos of the mitzora, which are inside the temple, asibo marshim chaper. We have the same law. Af marshim chaper bechutz. So to the same law with respect to the marshir, which is the tzipora mitzora, and the egla rufa, which is a mechaper outside of the temple. The, the ritual of the Tzipurim takes place outside the temple. And so therefore, So the Torah makes these laws the same. So the law, the Torah says that the law of the Machshir, i.e. the Tzipurim Mitzurah, is just like the law of the Machaper, i.e. the Eglar Rufa. So the Gemara says, This Tzipurim of the Mitzurah, at what point do they become prohibited? So at what point did the Tzipor and Mitzor become prohibited? Rabbi Yochanan Amar Mishas Shechita. Rabbi Yochanan says, from the moment of the slaughter of the bird, that's when the that's when the first bird becomes prohibited. Reish Lakish says, no, not from the moment of the slaughter of the bird, Mishas Lakicha, from the moment that he takes both Tziporim for the purposes of the purification of Mitzor, that's when they become prohibited. So, so the Gemara says, the Egla Rufa Gufa Me'emasai. 
And the Egel Arufa itself, at what point does that become prohibited? So the Gemara explains. Okay, I skipped a line. So I skipped one also. Rabbi Yochanan says it comes in the moment of the slaughter. Rabbi Shlakish says it comes in the moment that you take it. Rabbi Yochanan Amr Mishashrita. Why? Shrita Huda Asrava, because the slaughter is what makes the the bird prohibited. And Rish Lakish says, Mishas Lakicha, from the moment you take it, because Mi Eglo Arufa Nafi. He learns it out from the Eglo Arufa. Just Mag Mi Eglo Arufa Mechayim, just like the Eglo Arufa becomes prohibited while it's still alive. After Tipura Mitzurah Mechayim, so too the birds of the Mitzurah become prohibited while they're alive. Mara says, Mi Eglo Arufa Gufa Mechayim. And how do we know the Eglo Arufa becomes prohibited when you take it? I'm Rabbi Yanai. Oh, or me'ematai, from when does it become prohibited? So says Rabbi Yanai, Gvul Shemati, Baba Shachachti. Rabbi Yanai says, I knew a uh, point and I forgot it. Benaz ben Chavrai, Omar. And then my friends, the people in the yeshiva stood up, the Talmudim there stood up and said, Yeridaso Nacho Eitan, he Serta. Once you take it down to the wadi, that's what makes it prohibited. So Gemara says, O Imai, Garufa, Mishas, Lakicha, O Mitzra. If that's the case, says the Gemara, if you want to say, so the Gemara, so the Gemara says, well, if that's the case, and if you're going to say that if the time of the prohibition of the Mitzvah is learned out from the Egla Rufa, and it's taken from while well, it's still alive, if that's the case, Ma Egla Rufa, Mishas Lakicho Mitzvah, it's not prohibited from the moment you take it, it's only when you bring it down to the Nachal, into the Wadi, Avti Par Mitzvah, Nami, Shma, Mishas Lakicho Mitzvah. Also, the the birds of the Mitzvah also should not, should not be prohibited from the moment you take it. So the Gemara says, no, Hachiyasha, they're not the same. Hasan is like Ruachrina by the Eglarufa. You have a specific point where you can make it prohibited after you take it, which is when you take it down to the Wadi. Hachimi is like Ruachrina, but by the birds, once you take it, the next stage is the slaughter. So you don't have another specific point. So Eitzvei Rabbi Yochanan Reish Lakish, the Rabbi Yochanan who says that's the time of the Shlita, he challenges Reish Lakish who says it's from the tame, time of the taking of the bird. It says, Kol Tzipor Torah Tochelu. It says in the Torah in Parashas Re'e, every bird that is pure you shall eat. And for the word Kol, a rabos is a mishalachas. It comes to include this bird that is sent away, the, this bird of the Mitzvah that's sent away. They don't have to eat it. And then it says, And from the word asher, Rabos es ashluta is coming to tell us that, that you're not allowed to get any benefit from the, the bird that was slaughtered, the Mitzorah bird that was slaughtered. And if you're going to say that while it's still alive, it's prohibited, if that's the case, why do we need to tell us that after it's slaughtered, it's also prohibited for sure. It's prohibited. If it's prohibited to have benefit while it's still alive, for sure after it's slaughtered. Mar says, no, mal de tema mida de have a kachim, de mechaim asiri, but as yeshritu machshar of the No, you might have thought, in fact, just just that point. And it's like kachim, just like kachim when they're alive, you can't have benefit, but after it's slaughtered, then you can have benefit from it to a certain degree. You might have thought that the tzipori mitzora, the birds of the mitzora, the same thing. Kamash, well, we don't say that. So again, Rabbi Yochanan, who says it's from the time of the Shlita that the birds become prohibited, challenges Rish Lakish, who says it's from the time of the taking it. Eitzvei, Shechata v'nim tzeis treif, aletza, you slaughter this birds of the Mitzorah. And then you discover that it is treif, like you, you check the signs on it and you find that there is some mark in it. And so therefore, it's no longer able to be used for the purification of the Mitzorah. Yikach. Take another bird to pair it with the with the other one that wasn't slaughtered, and then Varishona Mutarasbana, and then the first one that was slaughtered is going to become prohibited to have benefit. And even though the Shlita makes the bird prohibited, this was a Shlita which was not acceptable. And so therefore it's not prohibited. So Rabbi Yochanan says, if you're going to be of the opinion that when you, you take it, it's prohibited. Well, if that's the case, Harishona, this first bird that slaughtered, Amaimu Teres Ba'ana, 
Why is it pro- prohibited? To have, why is it permitted to have benefited from it? Why don't we say just like it's prohibited when you take it, it remains prohibited? So why why do we say it's now permitted to have benefit? And in this price, it says Harishonam Butaris Bana that once you take the second bird or a third bird, the, the one that was slaughtered improperly is permitted to have benefit from it. Where it says could go into Nimtas Trefa Bene Me'ah. It wasn't that you did an improper slaughter. It wasn't that you did an improper slaughter, but rather you found that its intestines were, when you took it, we knew for sure that it was in, that it was not kosher, that it had a strafe on it. And so therefore, it's now permitted to have benefit because the lochalai kedusha claw, since it was already trefa at the moment you took it, so therefore its holiness is not on it at all. Gemara says, says Rabbi Yochan the Reish Lakish, we learned in Tosefta, Shechata shalobe ezel, v'shalobe etzeres, v'shalobe shni tolas. So a, a third question on Rish Lakish, who says it becomes prohibited from the moment you take it. Let's say you slaughter this bird. Not, and when you're supposed to, when you slaughter the birds of Mitzvah, you're supposed to put it into a utensil with, with, you're supposed to take it, and you're supposed to take the uh, cedar wood and crimson thread and a hyssop, and you put it into the bird with its blood into the into the water. And then you take the live bird and you take it with the cedar wood and the crimson and the hyssop and you dip them into uh, the blood of the slaughter bird. And then you, and then uh, that's the process. So the, um, So the so now the third question the Rabbi Yochanan asks on Rish Lakish is Eisvei Shachta Shalobe So what say you didn't have when you slaughtered this this bird you didn't have the hisap for Shalobe Itzeres for Shalobe Shnei Talas you didn't have the hisap the crimson thread or the cedar wood it's Rabbi Yaakov Omer Hov a hope to Mitzvasa since this slaughter since this bird was set aside already for the mitzvah for the purification of the mitzora therefore Asura even though if it was not done properly, it's going to be prohibited to have benefit. Whereas Rabbi Shimon, Omer he says, well, since it wasn't slaughtered properly, then the, the bird that was slaughtered is permitted to have benefit. They're only arguing whether is whether or not if if you did this slaughter or not, if you did the slaughter improperly, it's considered a slaughter. But to Kuliyama, everybody's going to say that if you would have slaughtered it properly, it would be prohibited. So therefore, while it's alive, it wasn't prohibited. So this is a question on Reish Lakish. So the Gemara says, you know what, you're right, Tanayi, this is a machokas Tanayim. But Tanayi Be'er Shmol, Tanayi Be'er Shmol, Tanayi Be'er Shmol, Tanayi Be'er Shmol, by the Asha Mitzora, by the Mitzora, it has a way to make it, Malchir, that's when you bring the carbon inside to allow the Mitzorah to eat from the sacrifices. And also it has a Mechap, the carbonos that you bring from the Mitzorah. We never Malchir, Mechap, Erbechutz. And it has a Malchir and a Mechap, Erbechutz. And also it says that by the, uh, a Malchir by the Mitzorah outside the temple and 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 Mechaper by Eglah Rufa outside the temple. Ma Malchir, Mechap, Amar, Bifnim, also by Malchir, Mechap, and so, so too, we're going to say that the laws of the Mitzorah are like the laws of the Egla Rufa. And just like the Egla Rufa, from the moment it's alive, it's prohibited to have benefit. Also, the Tzipor are, are prohibited to have benefit from the moment they're alive when they're, when they're taken. So that's the price that we're saying to support Rachel Akish's position. So... So the Gemara says, let's go back to the price that we said we just cited. Gufa kol tzipor Torah tochelu. Rabbah says a mishulachas. Every tzipor that bird that's tohora you can eat. This comes to include the the the, uh, the bird of the mitzvah that's sent away. V'zeh shavot tochel mehem. And these are the ones you can't eat. Rabbah says hashchuta. You cannot eat the mitzora. Bird that's slaughtered. The Gemara says the apochana. Maybe it's just the opposite. Maybe you could eat the mitzor bird that's slaughtered, but you can't eat the one that's sent away. So the Gemara gives several answers. We don't find in the Torah that that animals, living animals, are forever prohibited. Sometimes they're prohibited for a period of time, but not that they forever remain prohibited. So is that really the case? Very more on the top of fifty-seven B. Very muktzah. 
Let's say you have an animal that was set aside for idolatry, vinevad, and then, or an animal that was worshipped, the Balechayim Nenu, that they are living animals, Vasiri, and they're going to be prohibited forever. So Mar says, Ki Asiru Igvoa. When we say that they're prohibited forever, that's to be brought as an altar. But they're allowed to be in, they're permitted to be in. And when Rabbi Yochanan says in the name of Rabbi Shemilchai that we don't find living animals that are prohibited, that means to say we don't find that they're prohibited for personal use. Been there, but what about an animal that is involved in sexual act? But Adim with witnesses, the Bali Chaim, they knew that this is with a, that this is alive as Syria, and you know what? I've been a benefit from it. So therefore, we, we have to amend Rabbi Shem, where Yochanan says the name of Shem Yochai, Alam Rabbi Yochanan Shem Rabbi Shem Yochai, Omatzinu Rov Bali Chaim Shasur. We don't find uh, it's it's we don't find that most of the living animals in the world. Are prohibitive benefit. It's not, and it's not logical to say that this bird that sent it away will be prohibitive benefit. While, uh, while it's, uh, uh, well, because most of the animals are not going to be prohibited, and so therefore, we're not going to assume from the prohibition that this is what you can't eat. That this refers to a living animal that was sent away. It's more logical to say it refers to the slaughtered animal. So that's that's the way to explain it. That's the way to explain the Gemara. So the Gemara then says, so the Gemara says, the Bay Rabbi Shemal Tana, so the Gemara says, let's bring a different source to the idea that the bird that's sent away is the one that's permitted. The Bay Rabbi Shemal Tana, the Amar Krav, the Shilach, that the bird was sent away on the face of the field. And we're going to say, that, that, that it's like a field. Just like and the field is permitted, and there's no prohibition on a field, so too the bird is permitted. Mar says, Hi, Sada, is that why the field is coming to teach us? When we buy oil at the time, then we need the, the field to teach us something else. Sada, Shuluya, Mod, Biafo, Vizor, Kenoyan, that the coin who's sending away the bird shouldn't stand in Yafo, which is next to the sea, and throw the bird towards the sea. Or Begavati, not, he shan't, can't stand in the, in the city of Kavat. And toss it to the wilderness. And he can't send the bird into the city. He needs to send the bird outside the walls of the city. That's don't we, isn't that we learn what we learn from it? Who learns it from the word sada? He says cross sada. What do we learn from the fact that it says ha sada? My ha sada shmamina tarti. We learn both of things that meaning to say you have to send it into the field and also teaches us that the bird that sent it to the field is permitted. Rava Amar, a different theory. Rava says, Lo Amar Torah Shalach Atakoa. Torah doesn't tell us something, Shalach, send it out to mess us up. The Torah is trying to help us. The Torah is not trying to, the Torah is not trying to, to mess us up. And if you have this bird that's flying around there and you don't know that it's prohibited, then a tremendous Takoa could come out of it. But we see from here the Torah is not telling us shalach send away the bird to to cause us problems. So now the Gemara says, how do we know that the sayer of the nazir is also prohibited to have benefit? We know in Damakra the verse says kadoshi yegadel peras show that if if he's a nazir he shall his hair will be holy he shall let it grow giduloi kadosh. His growth of his hair should be kadosh, and he's not allowed to have any benefit from it. Ima kodesh tofes is davam of yotzel chulin. So the Gemara says, well, I might think that that just like by something that's sacred, that if you sell it, the money that you get from it becomes attached to holiness, and you can have benefit from it. Whereas the hektish itself, the sacred item itself, yotzel chulin becomes chulin avsar nazir. I might think also the hair of the Nazir tofes is dumb of Yotzil Chulin. I might think if you that when you transfer the sayar into a monetary item, that the, whatever you give it to becomes holy and the hair becomes chulin. So the Gemara says, Mi Karina and Kodesh. Does it say it's Kodesh? Kadosh Karina. We read it as Kadosh, meaning to say, and that teaches us that just like it itself is holy and prohibitive benefit and it doesn't transfer its status to something else. Pepeter Hamor, how do we know that you can't betroth the woman with a uh, with this donkey, this firstborn male donkey that's supposed to be either exchanged for a lamb or or 
or killed. Name him as Nisan to look Rabbi Shimon. Maybe our Mishra is not like Rabbi Shimon who says, Petach Hamor Asr Bana, Divi Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Shimon Matir. Rabbi Huda says it's prohibited, but Rabbi Shimon says it's allowed. So it must be that our Mishnah, which says that Petach Hamor is prohibited to have benefit from, is not like Rabbi Shimon. Where it says, No, Amar Rav Nachman, Amar Rav Baravu, Achar Arifa. No, when our Mishnah is talking about a case that after the, the killing of the donkey, that there, Rabbi, even Rabbi Shimon would admit that it's prohibited to have benefit. Because we're going to compare it, the Petach Hamor, to the Egla Arufa. Uh, but, and so therefore, our mission goes according to everybody. It means say before it was, before the donkey was killed, that's when there's a dispute between Rabbi Huda and Rabbi Shimon. But if the donkey was killed, even Rabbi Shimon would say you can't have benefit. But now, and how do we know that you can't have benefit from the meat and milk, and therefore you can't control the woman with it? It says you can't cook a kid in its mother's milk three times. Echad iser achilo, one is you can't eat. Echad iser aina, you can't have benefit. Echad iser bisho, you can't cook. So you see from there, you can't have benefit from it. And our mission, which says you can't betroth the woman with meat and milk. The time you have a ben Yehuda Omer, Basar Rechav Asar Ba'achilo, Mutar Ba'anda. Yehuda says you're allowed to benefit from meat and milk. And it says, And then later on it says, Just like by, a, by an animal that's a trefa, you know how to benefit, but you know how to eat it, but you can have benefit. So too, it's a, so too by Basar Vachalav, you're allowed to benefit from it. And also, you can't uh, you can't patrol the woman for, with chulin with a non sacred animal that was slaughtered in the courtyard of the temple. Menane mili. What's the source? Amr Rabbi Yochem Shem Rameir Amr Torah Shachotli. It says with respect to the sacrificial animals, the sacred ones, slaughter them for me bishali. Bishalcha bishalcha. And your animals, your chulin, you slaughter on yours. Ma shalcha bishalcha asur. Just like your sacrifices, if they were slaughtered outside the temple, just like my sacrifices, if they were slaughtered outside the courtyard of the temple, they're prohibited. So too, your animals, if they're slaughtered in mine, are prohibited. I might think, well, just like if I slaughter uh, your God's sacred animals outside the temple, you get carrots. I might think also if I slaughter Kulin in the courtyard of the temple, get carrots. Our carbon anush carrots for a carbon that was slaughtered outside the temple, you get kares. But for a chulin that was slaughtered in the courtyard of the temple, in anush kares, you don't get kares. Umar says, well, if that's the case, we could, we could challenge that by saying, So you could say, just like mine, uh, if I slaughter my sacrifice in your temple, uh, I get kares, uh, and so therefore, uh, and so therefore, why can we say that we get? Ha- and so that's how you get enough. Why would you say you get enough if you slaughter the kuhn in the court of the temple? So therefore, Abai has to give a different reason. Or Abai mehacha ushachato v'shachato so v'shachato so. It says three times with respect to the sacrifice. It says he slaughters it, he slaughters it, and he slaughters it. Plus a kroyasera. So there's three extra verses. Doesn't need to say it three times, Vishakato. Meaning to say that only those you should slaughter at the entrance to the temple. Why does it say three times? Because meaning when it comes to the the your your sacrifices, you slaughter them far away outside the temple, not inside the temple. And this comes to teach us this excludes the case of Kulin, you're not allowed to slaughter that in a temple. That when the, what the Torah is referring to is, so we say, the Torah tells us to slaughter outside the temple, the Kulin. The only I know that it's prohibited to slaughter Kulin in the temple if they're Tamimim, if they're pure. Minayel Arabos, how do I know about it? How do I know if it's a Kulin that has a blemish, it's also prohibited? Mar says, Marabani is Balai Mumim, Shekain Min. I can include the Baal Mumin because they're also the type of uh, animal that also 
will is kosher to be brought. I mean, neither rabbis is a chaya. I know that this prohibition also applies to the chaya, to a, to a wild animal. And Mark explains, I include a chaya, which is a tzvi, a, a gazelle, because this is all, also slaughtered like a regular animal. I mean, Nile Rabbos is a ofos. How do I know it includes birds as well? Now, you can't slaughter those in the temple if it's not sacrificial. So it says three times those things. I might think you can't slaughter in the temple, but if you did, it'll be permitted. It says the verse, Kirchak, Mimcha, Kirchak. It comes to teach us the word from here that's excluding the chun that was slaughtered in the Zara. I only know the pure ones. I do I know even the ones with the blemish. It's the same type of benayal rabos sachaya. And I know it comes to Kudukhaya. Same idea we just saw. I mean, I know it comes to Kudu birds. I'm Omer Shachatov, Shachatosov, Shachatosov. Yahoo, Yeshua, Tim Shachat, Yashikhan of Nikolam. I might think that you can't slaughter, but if you did slaughter, you could throw it before the dogs and get benefit from it. Tom Omer, La Kelv, Tashikhan or so. By Trefa, it says you, you store the animal to the dogs. Oh, so at Tamashikha Kelv, that the Trefa animal. With an avail you send to the dog, but you don't say who, and that was slaughtered in, in the temple, you don't send that to the to the dogs. Okay, we'll stop here. I, I should have a, everybody should have a Rafua, you should have a Yeshua, a salvation for our brothers and sisters fighting in the land of Israel, fighting against the wicked, wicked enemies.